Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Well look, this is a follow-up video on one I did a few days ago on imaging 3i Atlas, which I did from here in New Zealand using this telescope. Now unfortunately 3i Atlas only makes it just above the horizon at astronomical dawn. So we're not even in astronomical darkness at all uh, when it's visible. And by the time I could actually image it, it was well heading to uh, nautical dawn. So getting pretty light. Now while I was able to capture the uh, comet, I wasn't able to show any features of a tail. Now for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, you'll know that I actually image using a rig in southern Spain at Pixel Skies. And so I thought maybe I could image it from there. When I went into Nina and looked at orbitals, I noticed that it actually was above the horizon in astronomical darkness. And I had a bit of time before astronomical dawn set in where I could actually image it. So I decided to point that stellar mirror 90mm refractor at 3i Atlas. Uh, that has the 2600mm Pro camera on the back and some Antlia filters and uh, see what I could capture. And I was pretty pleased with what uh, results I got. I was actually able to demonstrate the tail and the anti-tail. So uh, we'll go over to the computer and I'll show you uh, where the comet is in relation to astronomical darkness and astronomical dawn over in southern Spain and show you what I captured. So look, I thought I'd briefly show you how to find uh, comets using orbitals in NINA. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, now it's a plugin, so if you want to go to your plugins here and you'll look for your list of plugins that you can find, and one of them is Orbitals, which I've already installed, but you'll click on that and you'll install it, and then you usually have to restart uh, Nina to get it to actually function. And uh, then if we go to the Imaging tab up here, you'll see this little thing that looks like an orbit. If you click on that, you will get a tab showing up here which says Orbitals, and if you click on that tab, you'll get a screen comes up. It probably won't show this originally, it'll just show this area up here. Um, it shows this because I've actually um, used it already, but if you go up, there's comets, there's numbered asteroids, unnumbered asteroids, James Webb telescope, and then there's obviously here where you can choose solar system bodies and then you can, you know, pick, uh, oops, I've got comet there, solar system bodies, and you can choose the Moon, Mars, Venus, etc. Now, for me, it's comets, so I want to update to the latest information, so just click Update, and uh, here it is showing it is updated today at, uh, well, it says 12.03, it's 12.24, but um, what I could do is if I want the most up-to-date, I would hit Clear, and then click Update again, and uh, now it'll show it was at 12.34. So it's a good idea to do this sort of closer to the time that you are imaging, particularly if you're using a bit of a longer focal length you want to be as accurately on that target as possible. So once you've got that and you've got update, you want to go down to here and put comet, and then you want to type in 3i and forward slash atlas, important to put that forward slash in, otherwise it won't find it, and then you click load, and then this screen will come up here, and it shows you when the uh, comet is visible in from where your location is. Now you can see here, when I was actually imaging the other day, the comet wasn't coming up until about here, which was actually the beginning of astronomical dawn. Here it is slightly into astronomical darkness, but it's still not getting very high above the um, horizon until we are getting into astronomical dawn, and then we're sort of heading well into nautical dawn. So it's going to get quite bright. But if we head over to the imaging rig in Spain, I'll show you the difference. So here is my imaging rig in Spain. I'm currently imaging a target. But if we go to the Orbitals tab, I would do exactly the same thing, do the update, put in uh, 3i forward slash atlas, atlas, put load, and then it will show you where the comet is relative to uh, where you are. And as you can see here, that the comet gets above the horizon well before astronomical dawn. So it's in astronomical darkness for a reasonable period of time. And in fact, when it hits astronomical dawn, I think it's close to about 28 degrees or so. So it made sense to actually image it from Spain rather than from here at home. So quite a big difference. So these are the exposures that I captured. I did blue, green and red uh, filters, all 60 second exposures. And then I did luminance for 30 second exposures. And then back to some blue, a few blue at the end, 60 second exposures. These are all in the order in time that they were taken so that we can see the movement of the comet. 
Now, all these images have been star aligned. So what that means is as we run through here, the stars will appear to stay in exactly the same place and only the comet will move. So if I hit play, you can see the comet going in this direction. The stars are sitting still. There are a few satellites around here, which are a bit annoying that you have to deal with when you process. But if I zoom in here a little bit, uh, oops, come in this direction, you can see how it is moving in this direction relative to the stars. And it moved from about there to about, finish, about here in about 40 minutes. Now, the other thing that you can see in some of these images is a faint details of a tail here, which will become more obvious once I stack them. The next thing that I wanted to do was obviously, I wanted to do a star alignment image so I can have nice stars and star colors, but then I need to stack all these files so that they are comet aligned. And that will give you stars all elongated and you know stretched out and things, but you gotta deal with that with either Star Exterminator or you can clone stamp some of the pesky ones out. But I'm not gonna go through a whole um, process on doing comets, you can find that on other videos, but basically if we go into processes and we go to the comets, where is it? Comet alignment tool here, you will put your um, files into here and you want to align them all together. So you can throw them all in uh, together, all the different filters, it doesn't matter, and you are going to have every image aligned to the comet. So now the comet looks like it's staying still, so then you can stack that and get the maximum detail as possible. When you then stack your images, if you're doing one shot color, obviously you can stack the whole lot together, but as I'm doing filters, I then have to stack all the blue ones, filters, then all the red ones, and all the green ones, and then all the luminance, and then produce my image from there. So this is my final image that I got, which I was pretty pleased with, and is significantly better than what I was able to capture from here in New Zealand. Uh, we can see the nice green coma, typical of comets, and then there is a tail stretching right back to about here that I can see. I don't know if it'll show up on YouTube that far, but... Uh, that's where it heads to. And uh, the tail in most comets, there's usually two tails. There's often an ion tail, which is the gas. And then there is often a dust tail, which I think is this one here. And it's the fine dust particles. Now, these two tails will always point away from the sun because there's the solar wind pushing those in the direction that the solar wind is traveling. So despite the direction that the comet is going in, these will always point away from the sun, which is why in the time lapse, although it looked like the comet was traveling this way, which seems counterintuitive for a tail, uh, this is the direction that the solar wind is pushing these two tails. I haven't been able to capture the ion tail. I, I think I've only been able to capture the um, fine dust particles. Now, some comets do have a third little tail, and one is called an anti-tail, which is this here, and I was able to capture that uh, on this particular comet, which I was actually pleased. Not all comets have an anti-tail, but this one does. And that is made up of the larger um, particles which aren't being pushed by the solar wind being left behind by the comet. And these will be left behind in the sort of orbital path of the comet. They form a bit of a disk around the comet as they're being left behind. And when the Earth, this is my understanding, um, when the Earth uh, passes into the same orbital plane as the comet, you get to see that sort of disk of larger particles which forms this sort of anti-tail and often this looks like it's pointing towards the sun. It's actually not, it's just uh, the, being left behind. It's the direction of the orbital path of the actual comet. So yeah, I can capture the tail and the anti-tail which I was really pleased with um, and uh, might try and image it again the next few days, see if it gets any better, see if this tail gets any better defined, or even if I can pick up the iron tail, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, look, I hope you found that uh, little updated video interesting, and also the new image showing the tail and the anti-tail. Now, there is a lot of rubbish out there on the internet about, uh, and on YouTube, about 3i Atlas. Uh, a lot of hype about it being an alien craft, which there is no evidence to suggest it is at all. It's behaving just like a comet, a little different to a lot of the comets we see, but that's largely because it's an interstellar comet. It's come from another star system. So instead of having an orbital period around the sun, uh, this one is just passing through our solar system and uh, never to be seen again. 
So yeah, try not to get too caught up in a lot of videos that are saying, you know, with titles saying it's really strange or it's broken up into five parts and it's heading towards the Earth. It's just not true. It's just an interstellar comet uh, which is doing what an interstellar comet should do. And uh, it's interesting from the fact that it is the third interstellar comet that we have seen. I would recommend that if you want to, you know, get some good information on space news and particularly about 3i Atlas, have a look at the channel by Fraser Kane. He is a space journalist, been doing it for many, many years. And uh, he likes to stick to the facts and the information that the astronomers are finding. Have a look at that channel. That will give you lots of good information generally on space news but uh, he's done quite a bit on 3i atlas over the last few weeks so check that channel out so look uh, until next time uh, and i'm hoping that i might be able to image it again i don't know whether i'll be able to see more of the tail and the anti-tail we'll see but uh, otherwise try and get out there and image it if you can and uh, so i wish you lots and lots of clear skies